on this episode of Live to Farm. After harvest, we're not finished. We call it waking up the sleeping giant. We're doing tractor pulling today. It's just absolutely crazy. Without those microbes, you have more stress during the season. We are going to do a little pumpkin chunking. This just showed up on the farm today by my wonderful friend, Rex. Hey Rex, can you give me a crash course on driving that? Cause I think I'm gonna go ahead and drive it before Kevin does. What do you think? I See, Rex is on my side. Come on Rex, show me what to do. <laughs> He's not here yet, so let's do this. Here he comes. <laughs> watch it, watch it. <laughs> We toured in October. We've been gone for about two weeks. We've been spreading manure, cleaning out turkey barns, but lo and behold, we had a nice surprise today. Friends from Case IH come down, got to bring us this state-of-the-art bad boy here, 9250 on tracks. We normally run an 8230 Case Combine. What I'm seeing out of this, cleaning capacity is basically the same, I think. Advancement as far as operator friendliness is just absolutely amazing. You can adjust everything in this combine, so I think it's fantastic. You know, we shelled a, a semi load already today and they're going to show us how to run the automatic mode now. So I'm really excited about that. I don't care if they want our combine or not, but this one's staying with us. <laughs> about time for us to get in that combine and, and show me how it's done. like 900 uh, harvests, but we're probably a third done maybe. Crops are, are, are doing good, not quite what we thought they would be. You know, the top end is off a little bit. Considering the, the summer that we had, crop is, for what it went through, really, really good, I guess you could say. We're probably 10% off of what we were last year. Pushing pretty hard here. We're going to be selling turkeys here in, in about a week. Start doing good tillage work. Yeah. Well, I guess about five or six days, they're talking maybe a killer frost coming. That won't be good. We got some corn it ain't gonna make it. Going up the mountain now. Shame we gotta farm stuff like this. Ain't nice and flat like Brooks got. Brooks trucks probably could pull themselves up this hill with one hopper on there. <laughs> It's so satisfactory knowing that the farm's gonna live through another generation, be passed down. The last two years, three years, the boy's really getting involved on the farm, showing tons of interest, and just like a sponge, he asked 10,000 questions about tractors, this and that. See a lot of me in him. Last year, he ran the combine quite a bit, him and Ryland. Between them two, they probably ran the combine close to half the acres so far. These combines basically drive themselves, but they're still having to set the, the machine a little bit. Just tell that they're really wanting to learn so much. That makes me feel good knowing that the kids are really passionate about farming. That five, six years there, they'll be out of school and then dad's gonna be promoted just to driving a truck, which is perfect because I'm ready to retire already. But my kids will be the six generations that the cop farm's been been farmed. So very proud of that. You know, we could pull up on our phone and see where their combine's at and actually know what hybrid of decob corn that they're shelling. I can see the settings of the combine. It's just crazy the technology that's out there right now. So I'm Eric Lichtenheld and I'm the president and CEO of Healy A Development. And today we're here with Kevin looking at some of the results of some of the work that we've done with Ficoterra on some of the crops. And we're really trying to understand the interaction of algae with soil health as it contributes to bacteria. Algae basically empowers the bacteria in the soil so it can do what it needs to do because 80% of the bacteria in the soil is dormant. We call it waking up the sleeping giant. As you improve the health of the soil, you directly affect the yield and the benefit to the farmer. And if we don't improve the yields of the farmers, we're gonna have a hard time feeding the future of the planet. So my challenge for farmers and, and growers out there is to really think about the importance 
terms of soil health and not just about fertilizers. Fertilizers will only get the crop productivity so far. And so what we're doing at Helia is really trying to help farmers create a much healthier soil. And that's what we do. Matt Klein, my personal hero. Anytime that I get myself into some bad situations, help me out a bunch. And his wife, Chanel. Come. We've got this. Let's, let's no, come. you two do not. Today, we had a couple people out on the farm. Anyways, the boys are a little bit restless, so we are going to do a little pumpkin chunkin'. So we're gonna see who can splatter this pumpkin the best. Who can throw it the farthest? This yeah, is my sure. son, Kogan. He's gonna be the one to throw it the second. And this is Shelby Klein, otherwise known as Schlub. He's going to be in it today <laughs> also. Yeah. Let's go, boys. All right, stand right here. Right. And your mark. Far. Set, go! <laughs> oh, that was just a little butt crack. Kogan, you probably should have picked a bigger one. All right, let's see what you got, I'll get tiny my cob. All right. Where are we at, Chubby Left? Let's see. It's all on the wrist, ladies. It's probably not. <laughs> oh, man, that's hey, like that don't count. Oh, oh that's nothing that's in the count. rule. I thought yes. we were going highest. Okay, so the first game wasn't that much you fun. You cheated. Well, we didn't think this out very clearly. No, you so now we're changing it in the pumpkin harvest games to bowling pumpkins. You guys go first. Get set, go. The winner gets to pick them all up. <laughs> just, just kidding, Slew. Nope, just nope, kidding. Nope, the winner has to pick it up. It, nope. Well, it don't really count because we're going to disc it. So technically, I win. You so. are a winner. Technically, I win. No, I won. You lost. You get used to it. Um, guys, this is a perfect example of Kevin Cobb because he's a sore loser also. Kogan, get over it. You lost. Who needs watermelons when we've got pumpkins? Just finished up harvest, so we thought it'd be pretty neat to educate you guys on a little bit how a combine handles corn. You can run soybeans, wheat, sunflowers, there's all kind of rice, all kind of crops that you can run, but we're here with our Case IH 8230. On the front of this machine will be what we call a corn head. All the corn comes in the rows and it comes right down here. This is what we call a feeder house. We run a 12 row head, which is 30 foot wide for the corn, and it'll take it in through the feeder house into the throat and then it'll come back into the machine as a whole with mostly you'll just have the ears of corn that's coming in. It'll run up through here and it'll take it up into what we call the concaves of the machine. We'll get in here and take a look here guys. This big cylinder looks like a big long rotor and these are what we call our concaves. He's got these holes here so it will thresh the corn and the shucks, the cob, We'll all get separated right there. And then we got what we call the shaker pan, where it sits there and it just shakes back and forth and it's evenly distributing the grain and the cobs that come on the back of the machine that's as it's going down the, th the field there, it is moving toward the back. And then it'll hit what we call our sieves. More air you can get through it, the more you can blow your cobs and your trash out the back. And your grain will drop down into this auger here and then it'll take it up with an elevator chain up into our and that's where all of our clean grain will go. Now what's unique about this compared to a John Deere is Case has all their corn that goes up here to the top. Like Brooks' John Deere, most of their corn goes out the back. So the red saves the grain, gives everything that we want. Brooks and his John Deere goes out the back. Sorry, Brooks. So there's several different concaves you can run. We have the Case IH round bars in the front, and then we are running copperhead concaves in the back. And you can see the designs are a little different. You know, these these are a little bit bigger openings. Normally we run really green, healthy corn through the, the machine and we would have plugging right here. We'd get plugged up with green material, wet stuff, and then we would start pushing corn out the back. We would turn our red combine into a green combine by throwing grain out the back. So we went with the Case IH round bars in the front and the four copperhead round bars in the back. And now that we're running copperhead concaves, now we don't have to really even adjust the veins on it, which is kind of a pain 
pain in the butt to do. So down here, this is what we call a cleaning fan. It's a channel that it blows air through our sieves. It'll blow most of the trash out to the back and then the corn is heavier. It'll drop down into the, the auger bed there. In a nutshell, that's kind of it about a combine. This machine can do in an hour what took our family to do in a week. It's just absolutely crazy how many acres and how many bushels an hour that you can run with these combines anymore. Welcome guys. We're here in our fertilized mixing shed, I guess we call it. This is something we've thought about a long time and actually Brandon more than me has been thinking about it. This all was in his head. He kind of put this together and designed this and it worked pretty good. This was an old cattle barn. That's where this shed came from. You know, just kind of sitting here. We poured a containment wall in case we have some spillage. Maybe not quite as big as we'd like it to be if we'd build a new shed, but it's working. You know, here we are, we're in the off season, but one thing we do this time of year in here is we start making plans. And we'll bring products in now, even though we're not gonna use it for another four or five months. So I'll show you a little bit more. Let's walk around here to the side. Like I said, this is where we fill our tanker loads. We got our small totes here where we keep our micronutrients, some stuff we, we don't use as much of per acre. And this side is just more for storage. When I say tote, it's these 275 gallon, essentially a tank that our product come in. To make this work, you gotta have a forklift, I guess. So we got the forklift there. I'll pull it down off the rack, put it over here on the rack, hook our pump up to it. And then that's what we pump into the, the inductor and an inductor is, is what we put it in to get it in the line, which goes to the tank. So in the shed, there's several different companies of their products that we work with, just like Veltima. That's one that we don't want to do without. You got to try to see what works best on your soil, and we do take a lot of chances, and some work, some don't. This year, we're, we're trying to smart foil out, and you know, we're excited about that. Concept Agritech, you know, that's something three years ago we took a chance and was very happy with it. We've been using them ever since. I don't care if it's chemical seed or, or what the product is, you just, you gotta try new things. We do a lot of test plots for seed. We do a lot of side-by-sides for chemical products and seed treatments and everything just to try to see if we can make an extra buck somewhere. It's a lot of work, a lot of extra time, but it's something that's important to keep us going, you know, in the future. You know, we appreciate all you guys spending time with us this year and uh, learning about our farm and meeting our family and um, we're excited about next year. So hopefully we can see you again next year and maybe you'll learn something new then. We got a lot of guys lined up. The track is in excellent shape. I'm Gary Cardinal. We're in Solomon, Indiana. Their local fair here. We're doing tractor pulling today, and that's where you pull this big sled. And as you older you go, put more weight on. He'll finally stop you. You spin out, or he'll kill your motor. I'm a John Deere man, but I'm driving a 1066 Air National, and my neighbor had this, and I wanted to fix it up, and I, I did. It was a regular farm tractor, and I just started taking everything off of it. I love tractor pulling because I used to go years ago with my dad. They've come a long ways in improving the pumps and clutches, a lot of everything. I just enjoy it. I never did get to do it much, and now my boys are taking over farming, and it gives me a little time to work on it. Seems like I'm working harder on this than I did on the farm but it's always something but <laughs> we have a good time afterwards no matter who won okay now let's go pull and see how i do first up on the sled tonight is going to be jerry cardinal from oaktown and my wife's diamond on his international tractor here he comes Holy cow! You talk about a ride. That is a ride right there. A distance of 321 feet. Give him a nice round of applause right there. Well, I end up getting third. Not bad. I, you never know till it's over with what you should have done, but it was a good pulling track and the guys that beat me, they ran really, really good. So I got beat by some good guys. Nothing like smelling diesel and, and watching smoke go in the air. That's a good night to finish up on. Hello 
everybody. It's Kevin Cobb here with Cassie Million from Aquaterra. Just finished up harvest, kind of going through some of our plots that we did on our farm this year. And we're here to talk about the product we use from Phycoterra. It's an algae-based microbial food. With us chasing these high yields and ROI on the farm, we're shifting our emphasis more on biology of the soil. The good thing was we seen uh, not only an ROI, but I think it was about a seven, eight bushel yield increase, but an ROI, and that's what every farmer's after. You know, the yield increase is fine, but we got to make money making these yield bumps. So Cassie can talk a little bit more about our product here. Like Kevin said, a liquid microalgae based product that you apply to your soil. And the whole mode of action is to feed the microbes that are already present. So bacteria and fungi. Feeding those microbes, it makes that quick association to the plant roots so we can get more nutrients into your plant. We can hold more water around your plant. So when we get into either too high water, we can get that water away. Or if we don't have enough, we can hold it there for longer periods of time. So without those microbes, you, you have more stress during the season. When you come down this summer, we did see more robust, greener, healthier plant. Most farmers like to see visual. I can honestly say we did see a better plant health, a little bit more root mass, and the stalk integrity was a little bit better, a little bit bigger stalk too. So we know like around your soil structure, 20-30% of what's around that is fungal and bacterial biomass. So understanding the real importance of activating those microbes to put them to work for you so you don't have to do as much work during the season that's, is that's what, what we're we after. like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anytime we can help our soil out, do some of the heavy heavy lifting that it does to grow good corn, you know, we may be running off half our acres with it next year. Just got done with harvest and called our buddies from Case IH, Hope Equipment. They said they had a special delivery for us and lo and behold, they showed up with the Black Knight. It's Case IH Magnum 400, which is an absolute stud. Ran it for two or three days so far and completely amazed with the technology and naturally the horsepower. I mean, we have a 310 Magnum and this thing is just amazing how much more giddy up it's got on these hills than what our 310 is. I kid them, said I think they chipped it because how much horsepower it's got. I think they've only made eight of these, so they, we were lucky enough for them to bring it down and let us run it for a little bit. This is one beautiful tractor. <laughs> Here at one of our farms, where I'm standing was a fence row. And what I mean by fence row, back in the day, it was a fence. And I'm sure they probably had cattle, livestock, something out here. Well, where that fence was, it grew up in trees. The trees put a lot of stress on our crops. They shade the crop out. They pull a lot of moisture out of the ground. We make more money farming the land with crops instead of farming the land with trees beside the crops, I guess to say. With this machine, it makes it a lot easier to get rid of the fence row. We dig the whole tree up, we dig the root up, we stack it up here in this pile. We'll either bury the root wads, what's left, or we'll stack it in another fence row down the road here. Like I said, the wind's blowing probably 20 to 30 mile an hour right now, so we got 20 foot high flames behind us. It really helps the process out. A Little bit of relaxing time for me, I guess you should say. That's what we're doing today is uh, cleaning this fence row up and roasting some hot dogs here at the same time, and that's what we got going on. Welcome back to Cardinal Farms. Here we are November 10th. Harvest is done, crops are all in. We've got beautiful weather here. And one thing that we do this time of year is prep for the next year. And that's what we're doing here with the Soil Warrior. Essentially, it's making strips to where I'm gonna plant my corn next year. You'll see when I'm running it, it makes a beautiful strip from one end of the field to the other. This field here I'm standing in was watermelons last year. And after watermelons, there's not a lot of residue. With that, we always use a cover crop. And this is just a wheat cover crop. We broadcast it over the top and then we disc it in. I'll strip right in this so it, it's still protected. Our biggest problem here is wind erosion. So this will keep it from blowing. I'll make my strips and then after this, my next pass will be the planter. 
This tool here can be used in the spring or in the fall. My favorite is definitely in the fall, basically because I got time to do it now. In the spring, it's just so hectic, and whenever the weather is good and the conditions are good, the first thing I'd rather be out here with is my planter. Like I said, favorite thing to plant behind. After harvest, we're not finished. Brandon's spraying today. We put a fall herbicide down, cleaning up equipment. Tiling is a big thing this time of year. We're already shopping for our seed products, our chemical products, a lot of planning. It's nonstop. Now, when we get a lot of weather, if it take off raining here soon, don't get me wrong, I'm going to Arkansas duck cutting with my buddies down there for sure. So let's jump in the machine and keep going while the weather's good. The end is the beginning, so let's go, guys. Yeah. 